thank you for coming to my talk today. It is an example use case of using NiFi, Kafka, and Flink together to build a streaming application. Today, I'm using data that's very localized. I am grabbing the Halifax transit system data, which is a GTFS uh, stream. And it's pretty easy to do using uh, our nice open source stuff. This is me. I'm based in uh, New Jersey. I do a lot of virtual events, do a lot of in-person New York, New Jersey and different places. I cover Kafka, Flink and NiFi and maybe some other stuff, maybe a little iceberg for uh, Cloudera. There's a whole big description. I was gonna originally use, I have example of this using the MTA data for New York City, but I wanted to see maybe we could use the data that's here. And the data here is, is actually really nice. And it's actually a decent amount of volume there. They got a pretty good uh, set of data. This is the introduction. I'm gonna overview a little bit of those three projects, show you the different sources, so some cool pictures, cover those three very large projects in extremely small snapshots. Instead, I'll show you them being used in a manner that requires low code which is kind of nice. And we'll walk through demos. That'll probably be most of the talk is walking through the weird stuff that I'm doing, showing you some cats first. Uh, this is the link to the GitHub. I'll show you that as well, uh, just in uh, the regular GitHub. That's all my three talks I put there. So make it easier. This is my skeleton with a giant taco. I like Halloween. Okay, so there's lots of different data out there, especially when you're trying to do any kind of thing with travel, as people may have traveled here lots of different ways, planes, cars, trains, lots of different ways. Almost all of these forms of travel have data sources that are very often accessible. Uh, they sp span lots of different formats. They go from XML, JSON, RSS, GeoRSS, Protobuf. Protobuf is probably the biggest pain to work with, but not too bad. I have different demos and examples for all these data sources, including plain data. And you could ingest all these to figure out how you might want to go somewhere. Uh, more relevant for me in the New York area because I have a lot of options. I could take different trains, I could drive, I could even fly between the little cities. And you can make those decisions based on all these live data streams that you join together and then run some uh, real-time analytics on to say, if the pollution level is too high, then I and maybe I'll stay home. If it's medium and it's raining, take the train. You know, I'm still trying to figure out what's the optimization of which travel to use, but at least I get all the data. And then maybe someone who's got some uh, data analyst, data science background will be like, well, this is how we do it. I'm using a bunch of Apache projects. There's a bunch I'm not even showing because they're, uh, maybe I'll point them out when they pop up like OpenNLP, Teak is in there a little bit, save stuff in Parquet, Iceberg. Uh, we've got talks today on Ozone, Iceberg. I think that's it from this group. And then all this transit data all at once. Uh, usually get my data. NiFi is the first step because NiFi is very easy to use. It can support a lot of data. I know some people said, oh, you know, I had trouble once I hit a couple terabytes. Well, I could tell you I have a client with a hundred nodes that's pushing through a petabyte a day. And I can't tell you where they are because it's in a private network underground, but they're doing that. And they're not the only ones. NiFi has been around for more than a decade and it's been open source for a very long time. Very solid, especially solid for most people's use cases. You're, most people are not moving terabytes of data a second. And if you are, you know you're gonna have to get some good hardware. Uh, especially when you're getting it from weird sources, you're getting it from rest endpoints or it's GTFS or if it's off a moving brown truck 
or you've got it in an ATM or in a mine or offshore on an oil well, which, you know, cool, cool stuff to get that off the devices first, then get it cleaned up and then get it into a stream where we could get it into Kafka or Pulsar to distribute it and make sure we don't lose the data and be able to share it. So I don't just have one person operating on the data at once. You know, Flink is great to receive that, but there's also people might want to do that with Kafka streams or with Spark or with just a Java app or Rust app. There's Kafka and Pulsar consumers for almost every language you could find out there. But at the end, at some point, people probably want to land the data. Now, some of the data may be just an aggregate. There's decisions there. And obviously, you can store data within your Kafka and Pulsar pipelines for extremely long time, tiered storage being available in different implementations in different places. But if you can't, NIFI, Flink, or Kafka can very easily store that data into lots of Apache data stores and some other non-Apache data stores if you have to. This is the little diagram for my app. I think this goes to the uh, GitHub as well. NIFI grabs the GTFS feeds as a couple. Also, I do an initial setup. Uh, Halifax provides static data feeds that change somewhat, not too often, because how many new bus stops do you get? Probably not too many. I download those. And for this one, because I happen to have Postgres on my machine, because I need that for a Hive Meta store, I'm storing, caching some of my data in Postgres to do some lookups. I could cache that in Kudu or in Iceberg or in HBase or in 30 other Apache projects, but that's the one I'm using. Uh, get it into Kafka as soon as possible once it's cleaned up in a format that I like. I like to put the data flat and wide. That works for everybody. Keep it in a standard format like JSON or Avro. And then once uh, it gets through Kafka, Flink will do the analytics on it and Flink could push it out to, you know, Iceberg or to S3 or HBase or another data store. Or in this case, I'm just going to cache that as a materialized view that shows up as a REST endpoint. And then I'll show that in a little dashboard. Also, NIFI will send out alerts to Slack. NIFI has a direct thing to push there. You could also push to Discord, could push to email. Could push to like 300 uh, destinations, whatever makes sense. Again, not writing code. Got the same one to do this for the MTA, which is the largest uh, agency in the United States for uh, transit. They have a lot of endpoints because it's subway, it's trains, it's buses. That one's interesting. I'm not going to show that one because we're not in New York right now. Uh, when we're in New York, we do it. When I was in... Sao Paulo, Brazil, they also have uh, data that you can stream in. So I got an example of that one. Uh, what's pretty cool is it doesn't really matter. You know, that's the nice thing you'll see with NIFI. I don't care what the source is, what your sink is. You know, I can get it in, start cleaning it up, normalize it, then push it to any, so many other Apache projects and just use it for whatever you need to. Uh, U.S. government has travel advisories. Again, helpful if I'm going to travel. Maybe they tell me, don't go to this country. They don't like NIFI. And I'm like, oh, don't go there. So I won't go there. Uh, so I want that data. That data is RSS feed. Kind of weird the way they encode it. I also use the, their travel data to uh, send it to an LLM to get a summarization of that. I won't show you that one because that's not open source yet, fortunately. Uh, air quality, there's a couple of open source, freely available air quality ones, as well as some sensors I have. But uh, I didn't bring all that because I was on a little propeller plane to get here. Maybe uh, maybe in uh, Slovakia, I'll bring that. I don't know if that'll make that through customs. I don't know. Uh, so Kafka, there's some Kafka experts in the room. Uh, so I'm not going to go too deep into it other than saying I'm using Kafka. I could use Pulsar, swap them out pretty easily. Really, the idea is I want to get data as quickly as possible into a place where it's not going to get lost 
and I'll keep it in order and then I can distribute it to other people. So if I go offline, like I'm doing something remote, I have that somewhere and that could be distributed, that could be geo-replicated to other people. It's, it's in a safe hands to be distributed elsewhere. So that's my first goal, get data in a cleanable format, send that out to somebody because then it can be used in Spark, it could be used in Flink. You can be used in a ton of different projects. That's a great way to distribute it. That's the separation of concerns for me is NIFI just gets it started, get it into Kafka. And then if you decide to write a Kafka Connect app or Streams or Flink, you have a lot of options. I like Flink. It's pretty cool. It also lets me create tables very easily. Now, in some third-party tools, it'll do this automatically for you. But if you have to do it manually, still pretty easy. And I don't know why we haven't put it into regular Flink to be able to look at a schema or look at a JSON document and create these tables. I might write that. I might write that in NIFI to produce the Flink table. Because uh, NIFI can give me all those fields because it knows what they are and what type they are. And you could create it. What's nice here is... Pretty easy to do, looks like a regular table. Again, that uses Apache Calcite, uses it in NiFi, we use it in Flink. Calcite's used in a lot of places. It is a undervalued project, which is very awesome. But uh, you set up what you want here, and then we're ready to have a table that acts as if it's uh, just a table. So, which is great. Again, don't have to write much code. I'm just writing some SQL. I know SQL is code, but it's not the code that people are using to write uh, Ozone and HBase and some of these really complex projects. You can write pretty simple code that does some complex things. And it's the same SQL you've seen before. NiFi is on the shirt. NiFi is probably my favorite project because it's made my life so much easier. Previously, I, when I was at working at Pivotal in spring, wrote everything in Java. Every single, every time you want to load a table, write another spring object. That certainly works, but I think most people's time is more valuable than reading from a table and like, oh, it's these seven fields. Oh, now it's these nine fields. And then it changes. Now you recompile and I redeploy it. Well, with NiFi, doesn't does, changes it, doesn't change any code. I don't have to write any Java. I don't care what your fields are. I could use the established schema. I could use... Uh, any of the open source schema registries, I could use Confluence, uh, Hortonworks, uh, I could use a built-in one in NiFi, or I could just let it examine the data and give me a schema. If we have standardized JSON, Avro, or other formats, it'll figure it out for us. Within NiFi, this is a pluggable architecture. So if there's some kind of reader or writer you're missing, very easy to write those, get them committed to the uh, open source project, or you know, put in your own open source if it's very particular to you. So I can read all these formats and not have to know what the fields are, what their types are, and if it changes, doesn't matter, dynamically figures that out. Very nice. So I could do grok, log files, Windows events, JSON, or a ton of formats and then write out a bunch of different formats very easily makes it very easy and very scalable for structured semi-structured data NIFI also works with unstructured data so zip files images I had a use case where someone was receiving emails that had a zip file full of excel NIFI can pop that email take those files out of the zip grab those Excel files, pull out the tables, and then push them into, I was pushing them into a Hive table. That easy. It's really easy. And again, no code to do that. Supported by projects underneath there like Tika and uh, PDF Box, which are great uh, Apache projects. Uh, a lot of Apache goes into this. Like every processor almost is uh, could be a separate project. Uh, Providence unique feature of NiFi that was needed when they first created it and comes in really handy. Most people don't have it. This is an audit log, a lineage of everything that happens in your NiFi flow. 
So I know what the data look like at every time I touched it. So you look at my flows and there's a lot going on. I know each step and I could stop each spot and go, this is what I changed, how I changed it. And all this metadata can be pushed to a data store or it can be used programmatically. So I can use my metadata programmatically to do things like, oh, all of a sudden the size of the file dropped. Why is that? Let me write some analytics on it and make a decision and do something based on that. Uh, this comes in handy too, is if you're dealing with third-party data and someone's not giving you all the data they said they were going to give you. Well, I have saved a couple of companies millions of dollars because they were paying for data they weren't getting. They said, yeah, we're sending you, you know, 50,000 records. They were getting 1,000 repeated or they would send it and they wouldn't finish the stream and rest, they would get part of the way, then keep retrying it. So they were paying for the data multiple times because it would have to call the same data stream 30, 40 times. A lot of those things you can't see if you don't see this lineage, especially in a distributed system, things are all over the place. I might be in a 40, 50 node cluster. All this provenance is standardized. We also have the ability to run queries using CalCite against that provenance while it's happening. Pretty unique to NiFi, but since NiFi has all those sources and syncs, I could connect that and then I could push that provenance to uh, Apache Atlas and have a full understanding of a whole life cycle going from an S3 bucket to uh, a Hive table into NiFi, into Kafka, into Flink and then into an iceberg store. We just adding support for Python as a lot of data scientists want to do that. I can call it now as an Excel, as a call to a script, but this is a native component. So you can write a component in Python, could be LLM, any kind of, use any library and we'll add that as a native component. So that'll just be part of my flow in NiFi, really nice. Uh, thing there. I've got links to stuff I'm doing, but let's let's get to uh, running code. Let me get this out of here. Okay, fun stuff. Okay, so we'll start off at the beginning. Uh, show you with the GitHub. So I wanted to grab the data from transit systems, and I'm like, well, let's see. Does Halifax have one? didn't know they have one so the first thing i do with any kind of data is like okay what endpoints do you have do you have free data somewhere do you have streaming data what do you have first thing i found was static data so they have a zip file full of gtfs data okay now if i can download that so i could just run things on demand and we'll see how fast the network here is. And then the second step is I decompress it. Can't hit escape there. I can escape it, unzip it, unpack the different files. And then once I have those files, I'm just pushing them. They happen to be CSVs. I don't know why the GTFS system they're using has CSVs for these. But I'm just read those come out as CSV files. So when they come out, I unzip them and then I push that whole bunch of CSV records into Kafka. The NiFi Kafka uh, producer will take 50, 100,000 records at a time and push them through. They'll be, you know, broken up into individual Kafka records once they get to Kafka. But here I'll just create the name of the topic on the on the fly because those are all different lookup tables. So when that's finished, escape is a very important part of NiFi. <laughs> Fix that tough. So I just send all those different ones to uh, Kafka. So if I go to Kafka, I've loaded these. I've got a lot of these lookup tables, like agency. Ooh, are they empty? Maybe I'm out of data. Maybe I should reload them. Let's see. Oh, okay. Well, let's reload them. Okay. I may have dumped those tables. So since I started loading this anyway, let's continue the process here and push those to uh, Kafka. Ooh, did I change my... 
I did, this is the provenance. I forgot to change my IP address to push to the right uh, Kafka. That is my bad. Let's see, do people know the uh, IP in here? Yeah, this is the fun part, doing this live. 10, here we go. Fun to change IPs on the fly. I mean, there's better ways to do this, but I like to uh, to keep this uh, naming over here so I don't have to uh, hard code it in the uh, app. Okay. Let's see if that magically fixed all my problems in the world here. Let's see. Let's retry. So if there's an error in NiFi, it produces a bulletin that shows up in the bulletin boards, which will let you go right there. That is also available in a uh, provenance data that I could push to people. So if I want to send those messages, I could push them to Grafana or something else, or I could just uh, process them in NiFi. Uh, NiFi has controls to do reporting tasks. One will send them right to Prometheus if I had Prometheus running on my laptop as well, which is way too much stuff to run on a laptop. Or we've got the query NiFi test, which will send it to whatever endpoint you want to send it. So I could send my errors to Kafka. This would be a problem if Kafka is not available. Did we make it? Okay, we ran it. It succeeded. This is where I look at the provenance to see what happened. Uh, here I could see all, this is all metadata. Now, if I keeps your data separate in a flow file and then puts the metadata around it. So we're not changing your data in case you need it unchanged. This one sent one message. This one sent a little bigger one here. This one had 2000. So we should, if we go to Kafka now, there should be some data there. So there's only one agency, the Halifax agency. So that's not the best lookup table. That one was pretty small. Uh, but for, let's see which one is big. Stop times, 67 megs we just pushed. That's a lot of Kafka records. I put them in from CSV, now if I converted them to JSON, I could have done Avro, Protobuf. Keeping it simple, JSON I like, and it's very uh, clean. Put a key and a value in there. You know, it's nice to do. So we have that running. So we saw that in the lineage. So we have our lookup tables. Those are important because as part of this, I am uh, using that to uh, look up to make sure we have full names. Because in the GTFS data, they give you just codes and abbreviations. So I wanted a little more than that. So I'm just going to run this one once. Uh, there's multiple ways to deal with protobuf. Uh, I decided two different ways. One is there's a processor we just released for converting protobuf. And I have that one. But before that, we didn't have it. So here I'm just calling a uh, Python code to do it for me. When the data comes in, I have it. And then here I'm just processing this and breaking it up into chunks, make it a little easier to work with. So this does a split it out. Again, I want to make this data flat, so it's easy to work with. So I split it up and I'm gonna build a new record using JSON path. If you haven't seen JSON path, it's a nice library for extracting things from uh, JSON. Take this, I make it flat. Now I make a new file based on just the fields I'm interested in. Things like uh, bearing, direction, and put them in there. Those could be all dynamic or I can look that up from somewhere else to figure out what uh, fields I want. And NIFI has the ability to update any of those records as they come through, even if it's 50,000 at a time. So, and while I'm doing that, I could change the output format. So it could be JSON in, and then I could have Avro out, or there's a couple different formats here, Influx, uh, Parquet, or XML. I don't know why you'd want to write XML, but. Someone probably still has some XML there. And then we do a little update. Here is where we're using CalCite. 
I could do a SQL query. I'm doing a simple one. I just don't want any nulls. There's other ways to do that, but SQL is pretty easy. Here I'm doing a lookup against Postgres so that I can uh, change the route and give it the route name. So when the data comes out, I, it looks a little better to me since I wanted it flat anyway, a little wider data. So I looked up the route name from the route ID, which is pretty easy. I don't have it right. I could run, yeah, we'll, run it. we'll look at the Postgres key. If someone has a better Apache table, I could use that instead. But I have those tables in here. And it's pretty easy to update these again. As you saw, I did not write any, uh, there's no code to create these tables. NIFI built these for me and automatically put the fields in the right location, which is nice. As long as they're named similarly, or even if the case is different, you can make that decision if you wanted to push to uh, the right ones. What's nice is here is with lookups, there's lots of ways to do it. And this will look at anything that's semi-structured data and look it up. I'm doing the lookup with uh, Postgres here, where it's just uh, connecting to a connection pool, looking at a table and matching a column in my data that's coming in and getting a data out. But there's a lot of different uh, lookups. Uh, there's ones from any JWC store, but there's also I can look up from Elastic, I can look up from HBase, from IPs, Kudu, Mongo. And obviously, if you want to write your own, you can write your own. I'm going to push this data to Kafka Topics dynamically based on which name I'm passing in as an attribute. So if I need to send it to a new topic, I could dynamically do that. And this just sends those. There was only 90 there. Here I'm pushing to Slack. All you need to do is connect it by building a app in Slack which most companies won't let you do, but if you have your own Slack channel like I do, you can. And here I could just grab any attributes from the data, format that as a Slack record and send it out. So this is a nice way to have a UI for streaming. It's just sending Slack messages out. And this is different positions. Uh, I've got a lot of different ones. And it'll just send more based on what data it is. I put a little time out in there. I found out if I send 100,000 Slack messages to Slack at once, they don't like that. There's some things you don't realize because it's very fast for me. You want to think about that when you push data to things like Slack or any place that takes images that they don't like, things coming in batches of 1,000. So you might have to put a delay in there. The nice thing with NiFi is it has the ability to run as an event, but it also has the ability to schedule or delay. So I put a little delay on there. 10 seconds tends to be enough that they don't get too mad at me for sending uh, thousands of records there. If it was uh, more than that, yeah, then you get in trouble. So pretty easy lookups against Postgres or anywhere. There's a lot of other sources of uh, streams they have for their system. I'll show you one that's slightly different is the uh, this one I'm gonna use the version with the convert proto buff, which is really easy processor, points to a directory where you put your proto definitions, give it the name of the message you want it to come out as, and it comes out that way, pretty straightforward. Again, we can look at the provenance to see if it's come through, get an idea what the data looks like. This is pretty big. There's a lot of records here. There's a meg of records. I'm not going to show that because a mega of Jason's a really big uh, screen there, but I will show you what happens when we push that data through the system. Again, different steps do different parts of it. The data coming out of protobuf is very hierarchical. So to make it flat, there's a little bit of work. That's why there's a lot of steps. I'm pulling out these things. I want them as flat as possible because I want a wide record, which is nice for Iceberg and HBase and Kafka and everybody. I don't want these nested things that you got to do weird queries to get the data out of. So I'm pushing that data. Again, I said we're pushing it all to Kafka after doing some lookups here. Well, let me make sure I'm pushing all of this. Uh, the nice thing in NiFi is we have configurable queues between them, so I don't lose data even if something stops. 
or something has slows down. All these little cues in between here are configurable for back pressure with built-in load balancing. So it's running on my laptop, but it could be running on a hundred node server, hundred node cluster, you won't notice the difference. The only way you know it's different is if you decide somewhere that things should only be pushed by a single node on the primary node, you can do that. Sometimes you need to do that if you're pulling from a file or pushing to a file where it's not like S3 or something that can handle, you know, concurrency of uh, access. So we're pushing that in there. Then I go into Flink. Let me restart my Flink job here and make sure we pushed into the vehicle positions. This is alerts. Let's find positions. There's a lot of data here. Uh, nice thing is if I don't know where something is, I could do a search. Oh, satellites. That's a good talk. Uh, let's vehicle. It's also nice if you run an environment that's not your uh, development environment where you have thousands of examples. Brazil, when I look at Brazil data. Okay, I'm just going to do the easy way and go over here to where it's uh, positions. Who I didn't show this one. Uh, if if we get updates, I just pull them from Kafka and then update Postgres. That's one, no code. Uh, did we go over far enough? We went over too far. Positions. Okay, let's run this one. So we get some uh, some data. Make sure I don't have anything stopped here. That is the thing in NiFi. I can determine remotely if something is stopped in NiFi and remotely start and stop any processor, either with REST or an SDK or with NiFi. NiFi can call NiFi to run NiFi, which is, I got in trouble for that. You're not supposed to do more than three levels of NiFi. You get kicked out of places. Okay, so we got it coming into Kafka. Let's make sure we're getting vehicle positions here. And it could be any Kafka. It could be pure open source Kafka or from any of the vendors who run Kafka or Kafka compatible. There's KOP on Pulsar. There's some other vendors out there. So we got vehicle positions. Let's make sure this data looks recent. I don't see it showing up. Let's make sure it didn't stop somewhere. Is there not a lot of vehicles running because it's Sunday? It's probably not a lot of vehicles running on Sunday, which if anyone needs to take a bus later, you're not going to be happy. I can tell you during the week when it's not a holiday. Okay, there's some. Let's make sure we went to the uh, we went to the send it to the right place here. Oh, uh, let's. See. What schema did we go to? All the metadata is there if you're willing to look for it. Topic Halifax. Oh, no space. Someone created too many uh, topics. I don't know who that is. Somebody. I, I think it was David. He wants me to use Pulsar instead. I'll use that for the next time. Okay, is this the right time? That's the right time, 1152. Okay, now we've got data. Oh, okay, now there's data. Data's in here. This is my Flink runner. You can run Flink SQL from the command line or put it inside a Java or Scala app and just deploy it. This is a little nicer way to do that. I've got my data coming back and here I've set up a materialized view and I have it set up to cache. So in case I don't get enough records to show, I could keep the old ones there. That's stored secretly in a Postgres database. Hopefully they're gonna move that to iceberg, but you know, that's not my job. Uh, so this is, that's open source little bit of code that I have colon, uh, like you said, the leaflet JS, which is a great library, is calling. So I'm calling that, and it's it's simple enough for someone who knows no JavaScript to write. I just pasted this in. I make this call, and I pass in the Latin long from the data. Here is the link to that REST endpoint. And then I do that again for the uh, jQuery tables, pass that in format that to make my table. So down here as I've, I've got a sortable table of the data we just pulled in. And what's nice is this is a great library. Thanks David for finding this one for, uh, let's see, where are we? We're near, uh, 
we are near the uh, fort, so we can see if we got any. Uh, is this shopping center? Oh, there we are. Oh, there's a bus out front. So if people don't like this, I could run outside very quickly and get out of here and take this bus to uh, the university at four kilometers an hour. Uh, I might be better off walking. That's pretty much the demo. I don't know how much time I have left or did I run it out? Five minutes left for questions. Perfect. Yeah. And there'll be no questions though. <laughs> No, seriously, any questions? I know it was, we didn't cover that much and it's very straightforward, but maybe people have some questions. You know, I didn't show too much Kafka. Yes, in the back. How do I put JSON into a database? It is surprisingly easy with NIFI because I don't put JSON in there. I could, but what I'm doing is, let me show you when I'm storing this in data. When I send to Postgres, NiFi reads the JSON and converts it into SQL for me. Even though if you look here, there's no field names. I don't have to write that SQL. So again, another way that the SQL is safe. So, but I could read any of those structured or semi-structured types. NiFi does the conversion using actually some other Apache format uh, projects, gets that data, again, helpful with CalCite. Here I decided insert, depends on the database, depends on what I want to do. This does the inserts for me, uses this connection pool. And this one happens to be Postgres I was using because I happen to have that here. And I've got my parameters there. It's set up just like any other database connection pool. But I could do that with uh, any JDBC source really. But we also have ones for Hive, Snowflake, uh, regular Hadoop and a bunch of other ones. And again, if there's one missing, you can write it. I've successfully done Postgres, MySQL, DB2, Oracle, and what was the other one? Some other database. Who didn't give me any money? So. Yeah, I know if, if it was a database that liked uh, JSON, I could just push that. I have other processors that'll let me push to data stores that like to store JSON. Like when I send it to Mongo, it's going to be the native Mongo format. If I want to send uh, just JDBC, I could do uh, any kind of SQL and hand write to SQL. Obviously, that's not as safe and it doesn't do the auto conversion. But if you need to do that, you can do that. There's most connections you could do natively in NiFi. You don't have to write any code for it. But databases are very easy. We also have some CDC, and we are adding Debezium, which I wish was an Apache project to the Red Hat people in the room. Uh, uh, that's being added to NiFi, so we'll be able to take any Debezium source natively and have that come in, so you don't have to pull it through Flink or Kafka, which isn't a bad. I'm, I don't know. I don't mind pulling it in from Flink for CDC or for Kafka. Both of those work with Debezium really nice and work for Oracle and DB2 and MySQL and Mongo and a ton of databases. So that's that's pretty nice, but it is coming to NiFi, so you'll have your choice. I'll try them all. I would think Flink is probably the most performant, but how fast is your tables changing? That's where you got to make that decision. If it changes a few thousand records a second, I'll do NiFi. If I've got my friends in China who are doing a billion record changes a second per table and have a hundred million tables, uh, they better do flink. That's really, well, once you get to certain sizes, some, you got to figure out where to move part of your workload. It's really, usually isn't all in one place unless you're really small. If everything is really small, you know, a uh, hundred thousand, a million events a second, maybe keep it in NiFi. Once you start getting big, Kafka and Flink and Pulsar are really, have to come into the equation. Cool. Yes. Um, I've seen this original use cases came out of the NSA, which was live military systems, but everywhere from 
I most of the banks in the the world use NiFi for some transfers, usually to get data prepped up to go into Kafka to do real time analytics for fraud. But it's everything. Um, there's an airline uses it when you go scan your when you go scan your cards at those little kiosks. There's a couple of different color trucks that have the smaller version of NiFi called Minify running in the truck because we do live sensor. Uh, the largest water company uses that to ingest water data. It's sensor data. There's, oh, I could say who they are. Exxon uses it offshore on all their oil rigs to capture the data and spend it in. They also put it on 250,000 desktops to do cybersecurity for all things going on, whether it's Windows, Linux, or Mac. It, it covers uh, utilities, Halifax Airport, I don't know if he's here today. They just started rewriting all their live systems in NiFi. So any real-time things you see on the board are NiFi with some Kafka pushing stuff, tweeting stuff. Um, it, it, there's very few use cases. I use it to do a live jukebox. Uh, you, <laughs> the, I have literally a thousand use cases because it's kind of a Swiss army knife. Maybe it's not the perfect tool for everything, but it's a very good tool to get you started because you don't have to write any code. So, and I can experiment with any kind of data very easily, like grab some table off a log. Some people are using it to read all their mail, send it somewhere, send it to machine learning. We're using it at Cloudera internally to feed our LLM models because I can read from every database, every file system and not have to write code. And I could, use uh, machine learning as part of that. I can write any of my own processors in Java or Scala or Groovy. It's very easy with very little code.